Hey everyone, Anthony for Before Do's. I'm gonna do a video, I'll say a quick video. It's not gonna be quick though, but it's I'm really gonna try and make 1GD owners happy. Um, it's probably gonna make 1KD owners every ha even happier as well. 1KD FTV, even happier, but 1GD, look, I don't hate them. Look, this is this is one of our cars. I mean, I've got one, I don't hate and We've them. actually got this one here in the workshop for a service. This vehicle is gonna get serviced tomorrow. Now. I'm not trying to get servicing work on 1GDs. It's quite funny. People write things online and, you know, people joke around a bit, but then some people aren't joking around. So I'm not going to be thinking of anyone specific when I say, somebody said, <laughs> he said, it's good marketing to bag out engines that you can't make any money from. So I guess he meant this engine here now. You already know, don't get me started, right? You know, the DPF, the timing, the EJR cooler problem. I can go on, right? Isn't that enough already? It's already just massive. But look, it's not a, this is the whole thing. I was meant to be making one GD owners happy. So that's what I'm gonna do. Well, at least this one's happy. He's here for a service. You can see the engine bay. It's probably never had a wash. It's only done 105,000 Ks. And this one was built in October, 2017. Now, he hasn't had any problems with it, but he hasn't had it long. So would we really know if there's been problems with it in relation to the DPF, the timing chain guide issue, or anything going on with the EJR cooler? And I might talk a bit, bit more of those in this video, but people said, oh, stop bagging, you know, looking at the comments as well. I do, I do listen to what everybody says, right? So I'm gonna really not do my best or try my hardest. I'm gonna have a go at trying to make 1GD owners understand my perspective. So I don't hate these cars. The car's the same as a 150 Prado. That's what it is. I don't hate the engines. I don't hate many things. There's every now and then a couple of things I can think of that I hate, but I just forget because I don't concentrate on what I hate or try and remember that. I'm more concentrate on what I love or what I can do to help you. So, you know, that's what we're going to talk about. And, you know, people say in the comments, man, this guy can talk. Well, so that's what I'm gonna do in this video. This guy can talk. Look, I think I put it in the video yesterday, but just a quick question and answer. Somebody said, why is there so many problems with injectors or 1KD injectors and this one doesn't have it in comparison? Well, the injectors are a little bit better is the short answer. And the contamination issues from being worked on, the 1KDs were worked on every 40,000. That's probably one of your key reasons. The injector seats themselves are different but I wouldn't say they last any longer to a point that they need to last longer because how long the injector seats on the 1KD last was all you need them to last anyway. They generally last hundreds of thousands of kilometers, but it is a risk anything over about 170, 180, 200. Once again, depends how you drive at highway Ks. Now, let's first have a look. So we've got a 1GD, this is a 2017. Just show you what everything looks like quickly. So there was a change in 2020. I call it the remap. It's the same engine. There's some change, little subtle changes, not much. It's the same engine, different turbo, okay? Let's keep it simple by calling it a different turbo. So around this side, we're gonna have a look around. It changed sometime in 2020. I don't even know what month. I don't, I don't specialize in 1GDs, okay? I don't hate them, I don't specialize in them. But before 2015, before they came out, I said, 1KD, we like, we know it really well, last of the best. I'm going to stick with that. I recommend you do too. And a lot of people get it with the last of the best thing. Put it in the comments if you know what I'm talking about. Last of the best, right? Now, this engine's certainly got some improvements, okay? But it's certainly got a couple of issues that you need to be aware of. And people say, stop bagging it out and just tell us how to look after it and maintain it. What do we got to do? This is the problem, right? I'll tell you what you got to do. But the DPF's there. The timing chain and guides are there. The EJR cool is there. There's nothing you can really do. It's just luck of the draw. And here's the good news to make you happy. Like this vehicle might not have, a lot of people are gonna be happy motoring and never have any issues. But since there is a few major issues, it's still gonna be a small percentage. So perspective is required to get, the, get a grip on this. What I was doing though, I was trying to show you the difference between the early and later engine, right? So 2017, this is what things look like down here, right? So you can see a hose clamp here on the duct that goes to the that goes to the intercooler for people that don't know. So the turbo is here, right? You know, air box, air goes into the turbo, turbo spools up, uses the exhaust pressure, 
the exhaust gases go where they're meant to go. <laughs> Let's talk about that in a separate video. And it drives the other side of the turbo, which is like a pump, and it pumps the air under pressure through the intercooler around to the other side of the engine where, you know, it goes into the intake. Forced air induction, right? More air, more fuel, right? So, but just have a look. This is what the early one looks like. So if you, your one lo looks like this, have a look around. I'll try and show you some different angles on things, and you can put in the comments what's different. What can you see that's different, right? I know it's a bit dark there, isn't it? But let's go and have a look at the other one now, just to do a comparison. So this is what this one looks like. So if you've got 2019 or early 2020, it looks like that. January 2022, this is what I call the remap, right? So what's different? I mean, yes, this one's a bit cleaner and it's dusty at the moment. Look, so it's got dust on it, it has got dust, it does get used. It goes on dirt roads and stuff. Um, not a lot of, hasn't done a big trip this year. The 120 is taking the reins again and away it goes, right? The trusty old 120, right? This is, I just want to show you, what does it look like down here again? This one just looks a bit cleaner. It's even lighter and brighter because it's just cleaner, right? Now, see here, this is, I'm picking out the easy telltale signs for you. See this type of clamp system on the hose? Much, much better, isn't it? Okay, well, unless I'm, I stand to be corrected because I don't sit on these all day, every day, but it's my understanding that that's where the remap happened, the different turbo, that's where they changed onto this hose and clamp system. So much more boost pressure, you need a better clamp. Something like that, right? So have a good look around, right? You can rewind, fast forward, pause, whatever you want to do. That's the first thing I wanted to address, okay? I can't give you the month and year it changed. You'll know driving it. But look, I am eating. Um, there's going to be a bunch of these videos on 1GD talk over the next short period of time. So get what you can out of it. I think I've got a 1GD information playlist there on the YouTube channel, so I'll even put the videos in there, All right? So I'll sort that out after the video. Um, and we're going to talk 1GD, so okay. what do you need to do to look after it? What you need to do to look after your 1GD, in my opinion, and that's what I did, right? So first thing you need to do is follow the manufacturer's recommendation servicing what's in the book in the glove box, right? So do that to a T, like absolutely do what they ask. Make sure you've got the right oil. If you're gonna service it yourself or take it somewhere other than Toyota dealership, go to the Toyota dealership and buy the oil, give them the Rego number, they can do it based on VIN number and get the bloody right oil for the engine because if you have problems with DPF and Anything else, even the timing chain guide, it's all oil related as well, right? Or a major engine failure because coolant got into your EJR cooler. You're going to want to be able to say, hey, I brought it to you every service. I trusted you. I've got a five-year warranty, whatever it is. You want to be able to do that. So as much as I, you know, we see the mistakes we see come out, you know, we talk about the mistakes we see come out of these reputable places, whether it's. Toyota dealerships, ARB dealerships, just yesterday I had a photo, off topic now, but it's all important, don't go anywhere. So someone took, you know, he's got the front and rear lockers, paid the money to get the work done, it's been like that a while. You would have seen it in the workshop, the Silver 120, yeah. And it had oil leaking out of the compressor, so he rang them up and they said, oh yeah, that'll be the front dip. In two weeks, three weeks, they didn't have time to get him in, so he had to go on a big trip, 9,000 kilometres for him without that being fixed. Luckily, it still worked. It was just a minor leak, whatever. So he made that judgment call. Anyway, got the vehicle into the, doesn't matter which ARB, doesn't matter which Toyota dealership, doesn't matter what other diesel shop you've been to. Doesn't matter if it's Baron Mar Diesel, doesn't matter where you go. Kids work there that make mistakes, right? There's no kids here. Anybody kids here? Nah, any mistakes here? Well, pretty much it's on me. So we've got, we've got my main man, obviously on the job most of the time, but not always. And maybe he makes mistakes too, I don't know. You work it out, you let me know. That's a separate, uh, give it a try and wait and see. <laughs> That's a separate video. So what happened there just quickly, they forgot to put the nut or to tighten the nut on the end of the sway bar on that link pin that goes up into the steering knuckle. So he was driving back from picking it up and you know, that just sort of fell down and got caught up in his drive shaft and ripped the boot open and grease went everywhere and made some 
pretty clunking noises. I wasn't there, I'm just telling you from what I've received. And I've got a photo there. I know it's real, so it's a real story. Doesn't matter which one. Could happen to anyone anywhere. It's happened heaps all the time, right? So my point being again, when the kids are out there doing the job, they've got other things on their mind. Maybe not as much experience, maybe easily distracted like me. I'm easily distracted. That's why I make a point if I'm doing an important job to not get distracted. Because in my book, I haven't got... I don't forget things. I don't forget to put anything in your injector kit Monday morning, 7.30, your BFE kit, your wheel bearings. Maybe something can get damaged. There's a chance that can happen. We had one package in over 10 years go missing. That's pretty good out of thousands and thousands, you know, one. You know, these things can happen that are out of my control, right? You know, it's, it's a bit... Con you're a control freak. Well, you know, if I control it, if I do it, it seems to be under control. But when you let it out of that, you know comfort zone that's where things get a bit out of control and creates work creates costs that sort of thing so i'm telling you go there but don't go there does it make sense how can i tell you to not go there when you've got a vehicle that you need to go there okay so regardless of the fact that they might forget something might think like what's happened to other people at those places they forgot to tighten the sump plug and they're driving in the freeway all the oil's gone oil light comes on and you know needs a new engine this sort of thing right so these things happen right it doesn't happen most of the time. So, same as you're not going to have the bad luck that a lot of people have with these engines, right? At low kilometres. I'm not talking about, you know, 20 years down the track, you've cracked a piston at 400,000 Ks because the injectors were never changed or it had a remap or something like that. I'm talking about problems that happen within 100, within 40,000 Ks, within 80, 60, 40, under 100,000 Ks quite commonly with these three main issues. And even more common under 200,000 Ks. Right? You know, I don't see I don't see 1KDs cracking pistons under 200,000 Ks. And if it did, it's because it's got a chip or a tune. Simple as that. Or it's had some bad fuel contamination. Or maybe somehow somebody hooked up a three-ton caravan and drove it around Australia non-stop at 130 kilometres an hour for 200,000 Ks. That would probably do it. I'll be honest here. You can probably do it, even if it had perfect injectors, if you punished it that hard right told y'all you know i don't know maybe we're gonna upset the 1kd owners this time i don't know i'm just gonna say it how it is how i believe it you know i just i have to tell the truth it's the end of it, you know maybe i brainwash myself with what i believe but i just believe what i see and what i know you know when i see people tell me stuff on the ground whether it's at dealerships or on the road on a trip 300 series puts itself in a park at 100 k's and bits went everywhere went bush you know when you're talking to the person that saw it was there I didn't actually see it, you know. I believe it, right? I'm believe <laughs> it's technology problems, right? So these things, these are pretty low technology compared to what's coming, right? So expect more. You can have what this has gotten more. Now, so just tell us how to look after it. Stop talking so much. Just tell us. Well, like I said, follow the book, okay? If you want to look after it best, you do it yourself, of course, right? Or you take it to someone who's going to take the time and care to make sure it's done right. I don't know who that is. You work that out. I could say that's me. I could have 10 one GDs here a day for a service. I could be the one G. There's plenty of be made in one GDs. Everybody's got one. They've been out for nearly 10 years, right? Easily, right? I'm not chasing work. I'm chasing trying to help you people understand the vehicles, the problems, so you can do it. So let's get towards what you got to do. So I already said, if you want it done properly, you got to do it. So I'm talking to someone else. So we covered that. So you got to work that out. I can't do them all. I don't even want to try and do anywhere near them all. I don't even want to do them all day for one day. You know, I just, I don't, it's way too much of a big chunk. What I want you to do is watch the videos, listen and learn, and maybe have a crack at it yourself. Once you think you're out of warranty and you're definitely going to get no coverage on DPFs, timing changes, whatever, let's say that was 10 years, then you probably should do it yourself. But if there's any chance, like this thing, it's what? What is it, seven, eight years? It's 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, six years, seven years, whatever it is, right? Low kilometres, anything happens, they're probably going to cover it. But then it's got a sketchy service history. Miss a service here, a little bit late there, you know, it's a bit, you know. So if I was, to, I'd be kind of going, well, hang on a minute. You've got, you know, soot-loaded oil, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, what's the, you know, something to do with the DPF or the timing chain, you know? You can relate that back because the oil lubricates the timing chain and guides and all that, right? So you've got to meet pretty strict emissions 
more EGR flow, that means more soot in the combustion, blowing past the rings and contaminating your engine oil. So one GD, what do you do? We finally got somewhere, definitely 5,000K oil changes. If you wanna look after, if you've got one and you're gonna keep it for whatever reason, cause that's what you gotta do. I understand, man, there's not a lot of choices. I totally get it, people. Man, woman, whatever. Man's, you know, short for woman as well. So I'll call you, okay, man, whatever. Sorry, sir, ma'am. Anyway. Right, so 5,000 K oil changes. Even if you don't tell them you did it, drop the oil and just make sure you got the good oil, mate. You know, look, full synthetic is what I would recommend for these engines. Absolutely. The 1 KD, you can put any cheap oil into it. It's not fussy, okay? Ch changes are good, keeps things clean, keeps things lubricated, but it's a totally different thing. So I'd be doing 5,000. Where with a 1 KD, I'd do 5,000 as well, but most people have got that EGR solution. Once you've got the EGR solution, 10,000 kilometres or six months, whichever comes first. I'm happy with that, no issues. It's a bloody tough engine. Um, if you're doing a lot of short, cold starts, different things, change your climates, north, south in Australia, for example, you're in Tassie one minute and Darwin the next, then you might wanna have oil changes, maybe use some different oil. I'm not gonna go into detail too much because it doesn't really matter. All right, what else? So it's really get it serviced by the Toyota dealerships to have that backup, not because it's good service or anything, just because it's really highly approved by Toyota Motor Corporation Australia, which you'll probably be paying for any problems that need to be fixed up. So they'll see it as a good thing, right? So you get that, we're pretty clear on that. Now, what else can you do? Really, to be honest, I think that's about it. I don't know what else you can do. Um, you could probably take this plastic cover off and I don't know if you can spray some stuff around your injectors to help them from getting stuck later because in the last video, if you listen, so we've got rid of a lot of people by now. I don't know how far we're in. I'm just going to talk for ages till I run out of time of, you know, yak, yak. You know, I need a drink right now. Mm. Just had a drink and I'm having a snack as well. And I realised some people be going, man, this guy talks too much. They would have cracked it. They would have put their comment and they're gone. I'm talking for the people that like the chit chat, okay? And I wish we could have a two-way video where you're chatting back to me and, you know, like that. We could probably do something like that, but, yeah, we'll get round to it. Time of day. Time in the day. Um, so, look, what I'm getting at is, so we, you'll see a video. We did injectors on a 1GD at about 200,000 Ks. You want to do it as a prevention, that's fine. And that's where we get, to, I'm not going to say no, not at 200,000 Ks, wait longer. Um... That's where we get to learn. And of course, they didn't look too bad. You're not going to have that problem, the blow-by situation. They've got the thicker injector seats, like the 200 series, probably last longer, but I don't know that for sure. Um, but the one KD ones last long enough. They last longer than the life of the injectors. So that's all that I require of injector seats. So there's no real positive there that they're better because they last the life of the injectors already. But these ones, I'll say, they're probably a little bit better. They're a bit thicker, so maybe they work better. Maybe not. But the issue we had was, and that was only five year old, roughly 200,000 K, something like that, right? Um, and the moisture, the rust at the bottom of the injector sort of welding it to the head. In the last video, I said, oh, they're not in oil. When I say in oil, so the one KD, there's an oil gallery that runs through there. So when the injector seat leaks, so nothing's getting down there, right? So with the one KD, nothing, it's in the engine. The injectors are in the engine. There you go, to be even clearer. Nothing's getting down there. The only way they can get stuck is if that injector seat leaks. If it leaks long enough, then it'll take out the O-ring, the oil will come down, it'll lubricate it, and it'll come out easily again still. It's just that window in between where if you leave it for, say, 260,000 Ks, <coughs> 230, let's say, because that's a common one, and you're one of the unlucky ones at 230, but the oil hadn't made it down yet, you were in between where the seat started, and it's just all that rusty because the moisture from the combustion and the heat and it just welds it in there they get really stuck right but we can get them out no dramas i can see these being a bit more of a drama they're a little bit hard to get out i can't remember the full story but i just thought wow this isn't very old when these cars are 10 or 15 years old this could be a drama and i already know of other diesels where they hang up cars overnight by the roof and the next day the injector's still not out right so you actually need the pressure of pulling upwards and the wiggle Whatever, so pullers and things, they don't always work. If somebody says, oh, I've got one, it works great every time, that's because you didn't need a puller for that one. Those ones you didn't really need a puller for. The ones you really need a puller for, 
you need a puller and twister. So there's an idea for some people. Is this annoying anyone else? I'm telling you, right? So you might just learn something if you hang around. So don't push them down like that one as well, another one, right? Because you're just going to lose them, right? They just need to sit flush like that. So once they're pushed in, you push the center to reset it, put it in the hole. Always not so good when you're uh, on camera, right? And just push it down till it's flush like that, right? Right, it doesn't get, it's just how they are. Don't push it anymore, it's fine. Like I said, you don't even need them in my car. It's not even there. Not even there, right? But I'm just gonna tidy this up because it does bother me, did it? Let me know in the comments. That's your next comment, did it bother you? Yeah. Let's have a closer look at these, right? See what they do eventually, see that little, so that one's broken. There's like four little pieces. And look, they still hold in when they've got three, but quite often, once they get a few years old, they do crack, but see, flush like that, okay? Yeah, there you go, at least you learnt something, in case you didn't know that already. Now we're neat and tidy, this one, right? Yep, there is. Don't push on them. See, one's gone missing here. Why? It's an aftermarket one. Oh, you can't see it. It's right, right here. It's an aftermarket one because somebody pushed it and it rattled and it's gone and then they had to get their kit and put their old cheapo ones in there. Anyway, we're not really doing too well in this video, are we? I'm sorry. That's all you can do, just what the book said and just take it for a service. Um, if the DPF's going to play up, what can you do, okay? You can do, you can do what I do and my engine starts up and it goes on long runs, right? So it goes up the farm or it goes to the parents' house or in-law, 50 k's this way or 50 k's that way, return trip 100. So it does long trips. That's the minimum generally they'll do, the one GD. Um, it'll do trips. So highway trips, so it's out on the highway, it's hot. So it's better for your whole engine. The DPF, it's doing its burn at temperature. The injectors are gonna be in better condition because it's always done highway k's. The whole engine, everything, under the bonnet of that vehicle there is going to be in better condition that's the that's going to be the best one gd you can find over yeah, there. this one here right warranty you might not like it see no clips it just lifts straight off so you can clean and inspect it's not going anywhere when you close the bonnet put it back in the right spot when you close the bonnet the rubber seal up the top here it presses right there that line there and holds it in place mate nothing's going anywhere warranty might not every time it goes in for a service I only did it under cap price servicing, right? So I'm different to you. There's what I recommend you do and what I do, right? For me, I recommended to me that I should probably get it serviced with them for that warranty thing we spoke about. And it's cheap, cap servicing. It's not cap price servicing. It's cap price, but it's capped as well because it's capped what you get is limited as well, right? So I risk it for the biscuit. They sort of, you know, know they need to do a good job or there could be a video, right? <laughs> That's right. Um, but it looks good in the book to have a dealership stamp. Um, it looks good to Toyota if there's a problem later. Um, some services had to be done away because we weren't around or where dealerships can fit them in. And all my services get bang, bang on, done, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 on the kilometre because we're going to keep that book happy in case anything does happen. It gets highway runs. <laughs> Zero percent. <laughs> Zero percent. Look, so it's all nice and really clean. Now, risk it for the biscuit. Well, that's me. That's my problem, you know, um, if that doesn't work out for me. But I think running things clean is better. Um, uh, highway runs, full synthetic oil, whatever they supply at the service, and I buy the full synthetic GR Sport oil off them, so I've got receipts and an oil filter and whatever if I service it, right? And... It's coming up to 70,000 and we'll be doing all the rest of the servicing for the rest of how long we have the vehicle. The vehicle will be for sale. Well, it can be for sale any time from now. It'll be gone by the end of next year, 2025. So you can start saving up. Maybe we can have a payment plan. I'm not telling you should get one, but this is the best one, right? This is the best one you can find, end of story. If this is not the cleanest used Prado, you will ever find if you saw the interior you'll think it's done 2000 kilometers you won't believe it's done anything i look after stuff it's easy to keep it clean clean it mainly keep it clean's easier so this is the best one if you do want one be the best value for money much better option buying one of those new cars with a strap on bloody voltage system you know high strap on hybrid diesel hybrid mate what an idea anyway 
um, that's a separate video. Same as we'll have another video on one GDs. Just talking about trying to explain, I don't hate the engine. The way it drives, the 1KD, I just like it. It's got this smooth power delivery. Once it's sort of off the mark, it's just smooth through the whole range. There's nothing aggressive or surprising. It's just smooth and people are laughing going, yeah, it's just gutless. No, no, they go really good. My 120 just there, it's just beautiful. It's really responsive. It goes well, but it's really smooth power delivery straight off the mark. Where, let me try and describe this one for you, the remap version, all right? And I'm not talking about that other older version over there. Now, that's a separate. We talked about it before. Check out the playlist, 1GD info. Um, you put the foot down, it's very laggy. Nothing happens for a couple of seconds, right? So this is the problem. So you're sort of pushing the foot. And once it hits about, I'm going to make something up here, 1,500 revs, more or less, it just, it's really, it's got a lot of poke then, you know? It's too aggressive and it's like, I'm a smooth driver, whether it's accelerating, braking, steering, I'm very smooth. I used to get a lot of compliments. People are sick of it now, right? Um, I used to get a lot of compliments. How smooth, oh, another smooth trip. You know, when I was younger, I did some driving work, driving a lot of people around, let's just say, right? A few people watching the video. Yeah. Nah, nobody, nobody knows, but anyway. Yeah, it's a lot of driving, and I used to always get, oh, very smooth, very smooth, right? So, you know, people that get driven around a lot, and, mate, I'm the So, anyway, the point is, it's hard to drive this thing smooth. You know, it's got a lot, it's just really, you got to drive it and see. Anyway, it's just my preference, right? That's just my opinion, what I think. Now, I know people love their Pratos, and they love their Pratos with one GDs, and they've got one, and each to their own. That's awesome. Doesn't bother me. I don't hate it. I just want you to be aware. The 1KD was probably better for the long term. The 1GD, well, you're probably going to get lucky. So again, I'm meant to be trying to make a video to make you happy, aren't I? So all you got to do is take it to the dealership, get it serviced, and not worry about it. There's no point worrying because it's not going to change anything, right? If it happens, and it's within five years, your DPF, your timing chain, your EJ cooler, your engine, whatever, it's all going to be covered. But there's thousands of, here we go, make the owners happy. There's hundreds of thousands of these engines running around in Australia, and most of the people haven't had any issues at all whatsoever, other than the things the apprentices have done to their cars by accident, you know? Now, the people, see, most of them haven't, right? <clears throat> but the few that have, you know, this is the problem. Once you have some issues, and, and there goes the Harley. Right, once you have the issues, the DBF here, you know, and they worked on the car, pulled everything off, you know, things left loose, tight, deteriorated, you know, coolant leaks, met, whatever happens, right, you know, someone worked on the car, right, timing chain got down in there, somewhere behind all that stuff, you know, all that three days work, can you imagine how many things could go wrong? This is the thing, you just, if it was me, I wouldn't be able to trust it anymore, so if I have is if I had issues with this one, I'd be selling it. Anyway, so sooner, straight away, it'd be like, yep, get it, get it back and just see you later because, you know what, trade it in, you know, it'd be like, I'd just rather get a refund, but they're not going to give me a refund, so I don't want to deal with something that's had major work on it from anyone else but me, to be quite honest, because I've had too many bad experiences with lots of different makes and models of cars, so we're not picking on Toyota dealerships here, remember what I said at the start, it doesn't matter any of these places, right? They all make mistakes. I could sit down and do a video that tells you about all the mistakes I've had people do on all, I've had heaps of cars, dozens and dozens of cars, many new cars, under warranty, right? You know, I made the right decisions early on. So I was able to get new cars a long time ago, right? They don't excite me now. I love the 120, to be quite honest. This, it's just a tax deduction. It's just, I'm a Prado specialist. I want to learn, I want to get familiar with these cars, right? I'm not expecting to have any issues. I waited four years, I wasn't happy, I traded it in. Six years into 1GD, here we are, right? I'm not happy with it, but that doesn't mean because I'm not happy with it, it's a problem for you. I mean, if you're happy with it then and how it drives, then you're happy with it. I've got 1KDs, three of them, that I think they drive, well, the Hilux doesn't drive better. I mean, that's just gutless, right? It is, it's just gutless, four-speed auto and Hilux tuning, it's just gutless. I don't, you know, I'll tell you straight, I don't like, there's nothing wrong with the engine, it's smooth power delivery, it's just gutless, right? Where the 120 is not gutless. The 150, it's not gutless, right? The 1GD, it's laggy, and then it boom, takes off. But as I said before, this engine tuning and this torque is really awesome for the highway. 
once you hook up that trailer, right? You know, you've hooked up the trailer and you're cruising up those, it just hot, it's got good torque, right? It's just the way it's tuned. It's got great torque for towing and that sort of thing. So as a highway tourer, traveling Australian outback, towing or not towing, whatever, out on the highway type car, bloody love the way it drives, okay? So bloody love the way it drives. Can you, better than the 1KD out on the highway, right? You hear me? Yeah, that's, so the normal running around, the overall package, the 1KD, the 120, and the start stop, the 120. But this thing, once you're out on the highway and you just want to set the cruise control and sit back and relax, this is your baby right here. Okay, there you go. One GDN is happy now. Oh, he took my time, didn't I? They're all gone now. Right, so I'm just discussing how I feel about the whole thing so people can get the picture right. Now, this isn't going to have any DPF problems for a number of reasons. Okay? Six years in, highway runs, full synthetic oil. <laughs> right? I doubt it. Mate, it might one day, but I reckon you could run this thing to 500,000 k's the way I'm doing it, and you just probably wouldn't have an issue. But I don't know, because we're not there yet. It's all a new thing, isn't it? The timing chain issue. I think that's really just luck of the draw. I think they've made some improvements because of the full synthetic oil thing, because it's highway k's, and the average speed of oil changes on this engine is about 80 kilometres an hour, and all the other cars we see, hey, maybe we should go and have a look at the average speed on this other one, right? But I can tell you, I see about 30 k's an hour, which means the engine's done two to three times more engine running hours than this one when it gets an oil change. So this can get done every 10,000, and it's still cleaner and better than those ones getting done every 5,000. Do you understand that? So that's why this engine won't have any issues. Now, if you change the way you use it, and you start doing all these cold start, stop start, whatever, it'll probably be okay as much as any other one. But this one's had the best head start and if you continue it then that's what it's going to be now the egr cooler what can we do there is it a manufacturing fault i don't really know much about it i don't work on them i don't fix them that's a toyota dealership warranty thing they're not all covered under warranty no 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 there's plenty of people aftermarket changing egr coolers those people that do that do you want to put something in the comments let people know what do you know about dpf problems timing chain issues um that and there's other stuff i keep forgetting i really keep and i go oh i've got to mention that as well Look, you know, obviously the oil's a bit dearer. We said that, didn't we? But look, it's probably not going to happen to you. So don't worry about it, okay? If you like it, then be happy. You like it. You made a decision to buy a 1GD Prado. People love their Prados. That bloke over there dropped that off. His wife loves that Prado. I think everybody that's ever come here loves their Prado, right? And that's why I love my Prados. And just make sure you don't love it more than the rest of your family and that sort of thing. Otherwise, you'd be getting a bit of trouble there, you know, all jokes aside. Anyway, yeah, this bloke can talk. I don't know what else I can say. There's probably stuff I've forgotten, which is why I'll put this in the playlist and we'll have some more videos and I'll try and keep the other ones short, all right? But hopefully this one's kept you entertained and you get a good feel of how I feel about it. Um, yeah, that's it, really. Servicing's different, but there's nothing I can tell you that you can do on this to prevent those so look back to the 1kd for a minute so for a bloody long time there was no issues at all there's no dpf there's no timing belt timing chain any timing issues at all whatsoever talks about needing valve clearances checked but they never go out so it doesn't need that this has got hydraulic so it doesn't need to be checked this could have injectors stuck later as well you never know um but by doing the maintenance on the this is the problem we're gonna have to have separate videos this is getting really long to do with that crack piston thing and why it happens. I mean, it's just so simple to me. There's a number of contributors. Let's talk about it in another video. Subscribe, turn the bell on if you can handle it. And I'll catch you in the next one. Have a good one, people. See ya.